I'm very uh, honored to be able to present to you Registries for All on behalf of my team, the National Psoriasis Foundation, the Inflammatory Breast Cancer Research Foundation, CFIDS, which is chronic fatigue syndrome, and not only represent them, but certainly all the diseases that need these kinds of solutions now and the millions of people who are suffering with them. What's the problem? The problem is that fewer than 5% of Americans participate in clinical trials, that building cohorts for these studies is difficult, that phenotypes, progression, biomarkers, those sorts of things are poorly characterized, and we are missing our greatest resource, which is people and their data. The next time a person is diagnosed, they don't have what they need because we haven't done the work, because we didn't have the data. It's time to change that. The status quo today is that industry-sponsored registries are great where they exist, but there's too many diseases to depend on them this way. They're time-consuming and costly, and these trust communities are very hard to build. These advocacy organizations enter the picture. They lack sustainability. They lack the cross-disease features that are important for comorbidity and other things, and they're reinventing the wheel and, and uh, wasting resources. It's often said that when we're doing these registries, when we're trying to build these cohorts, we're looking for needles in a haystack. And we're going to contend that actually the haystack is made of needles. Every single one of us, all of us, want to participate when we're given the tools. Every one of us will do this. We're seeing a culture shift. We're seeing that the industrial age of old, where we had control as a means of production, where hierarchy was important, where linear and sequential activity was the way things were when win-lose environments existed and materials were the basis of what we did, steel, paper, things. We're now moving into an information age where openness is the name of the game. We're seeing a lot of abundance in openness and in information. We're seeing networks and collaborations grow. It's a win-win situation that's very organic. And we have more information than we know what to do with. But healthcare, biomedical research lag. We know that lots of individuals are collecting lots of information with all the tools we see here and we've heard about today. We also see organizations grow up around those tools. And what we see, though, is a fragmentation. We're not seeing that coordinated in a way that can do correlations between diseases, rare and common, open access, open source, open data. Enter disease advocacy organizations. We are trusted entities, sources of support for the individuals who have the diseases, scientific and medical homes. We have long-term dedication, and we have aligned incentives. When we look at this new age, we have the tools to address this fragmented system, and still we're losing opportunities every single day. Data can accelerate research and services to help us get to patient outcomes, better patient outcomes, and save us money. We need engagement of these individuals. So how do we get inf individuals onto this information highway? What's this engagement look like? This integrates some things that we've already built, but that our team has crystallized by coming together through this opportunity. Essentially, we're going to take a basis called disease info search, I'll talk about in a second, and use something called trials finder that will allow individuals to become educated and eventually to indicate to what level do they trust who is going to get their data and how. That will allow these individuals to go on the on-ramp of this highway and come first into a gamified survey, an easy way to start to enter information, move later if they wish to common data element aggregation, and finally to the high speed lane, the fast lane of disease specific data elements, a tiered effort. First, individuals will set their privacy preferences for data access. This is built on the basis of the bioethics team, the Genetic Alliance Institutional Review Board, the Certificate of Confidentiality, and our federal wide assurance. Things that we've put in place in the past, but this new system will allow individuals to do privacy preferences, to change them dynamically, and to have that follow the data. The architecture looks like this. Trials Finder will allow individuals to be educated, to register, to give self-reported medical information into a fully protected data store that essentially will empower them to allow access, decline access, or come back later. This will allow individuals, researchers, to search the database. And of note here is Oracle has agreed to allow our system into their health sciences network, which, which is a system across the nation of very robust institutions, so that our individuals are findable in their system. Further, individuals will be able to request that their electronic data be added to this system uh, under the High Tech Act, which we all see being implemented. 
So what does this look like overall? In the first phase, the gamified survey will build, as I said, on disease info search. 13,000 diseases in this directory Genetic Alliance has built over the last 26 years. Lots of information about individual uh, advocacy organizations, disease information, et cetera. But what's new here is this Enroll and Learn Now button. An individual can press it. The hundreds of thousands of people that come monthly could click this button and be brought into this gamified survey, which will then ask them some simple questions they can see some immediate responses to. In the second lane, we're talking about common disease, common data elements. And in this case, we're looking at data elements that NIH and other places have determined are important for all diseases and having them transmitted through CDISC and ANSI and SNOMED, et cetera. We're going to measure the same thing the same way across all diseases. And in the final lane, disease-specific data elements builds on something called Genetic Alliance Registry and Biobank, which we've run for the past eight years. And in these disease-specific elements, we're looking at detailed disease information. Advocacy organizations bring together epidemiologists, medical advisory boards, et cetera, and figure out what are the questions they need to ask to do signs, symptoms, progression, and adverse reactions. Our projected enrollment increases over the years, and we have done some complex modeling here that I could go into in detail, but I won't right now. Essential to say, engagement's going to be critical through this whole thing. In these trust communities, individuals already know affinities, whether it's through Facebook organizations or physical brick and mortar disease groups, and they stay uh, with each other, work with each other, listen to each other, and get feedback from each other. We'll do the same in the community with the researchers. How is this going to be sustainable? Well, first, we're going to look at program sponsorship. We're simply taking some commerce models that have worked in the physical environment and moving them to the online environment. Disease Info Search has 13,000 pages for diseases. Those can be sponsored. We're going to look at the surveys themselves being sponsored, whether it's a lane one, two, and or three sponsorship. We're going to look at fees, access to cohorts, obviously free for the disease advocacy organizations and with some tiered uh, fees for the academia and industry that are interested. And we're also going to look at service pro provider listing fees. We've already gotten dozens of service providers asking us if they could be listed, and lots of industry interest uh, in this uh, solution. What does the implementation look like? We're going to recruit individuals through disease info search, social media, the non-traditional affinity groups that are growing up. We're also going to use training for the disease advocacy organizations in boot camps, webinars, advocacy programs at medical uh, major me medical meetings, as we've done in the past. So why this team? Well, this team has a lot of experience. We understand both common diseases and rare diseases. We have a lot of expertise. We've created the Genetic Alliance Registry and Biobank and have tens of thousands of samples in there. We're large groups and we're small groups. We have REACH. Uh, the network includes 9,000 health organizations and 1,200 disease advocacy organizations. And all of this is stitched together by a, a transparent culture, a transformational culture focused on what matters, the people's lives who we are considering. And the organization and collaboration that we have is built on that foundation. So what will this team do? We will constitute an advisory board. We'll execute on development. We'll implement this in the network. We'll build on the outreach we're already doing for disease info search. And we'll use the lean startup model, which essentially says we need to put out a product, we need to learn, we need to iterate, we need to, to build that product again. What we, look at, what, we, what we are looking at is that today we need these solutions. We are no longer waiting. Data today means solutions tomorrow. Our loved ones are waiting for us, but we cannot wait any longer. Thank you.